While we stayed in Paris for a few days after the official tour, we went to Versailles. There is a video for the outside of the palace. This one is for the inside. This was a little more than a hamlet, but by the time of the revolution, it had a population of more than 60,000 people. The Palace of Versailles is the central part of a complex that housed the French government, most notably its royalty, during the reigns of Louis XIV. Louis XIII came to Versailles on his first hunting trip in 1607. He was crowned the king in 1610, but he actually didn't come back here until 1621. He liked it so much because it was situated between his principal residence at St. Germain and Paris. It was surrounded by woods that were noisy with pheasants and boars and stags. And by 1623, he had decided to build a small hunting lodge here. And this way he could stay here at night so he can do his hunting. It was just a small country residence and somebody insulted it by saying a mere gentleman would not have been overly proud of the construction. So Louis XIII decided to rebuild it in 1631 and the construction continued until 1634 and basically laid the basis for the palace that we now know today. And he actually bought the town of Versailles in 1632. I suppose it's nice to own the whole town you live in. The history of Versailles is linked with the figure of Louis XIV, who decided to extend it beyond just the chateau that had grown out of the hunting lodge of brick and stone, first built by his father. The king, who could see great things for the chateau and the forest around it, took on the role of architect himself and built a masterpiece with which he would forever be associated. Louis XIV first came to Versailles in 1641 when he was three, when his father, Louis XIII, 13th sent him and his brother here to escape a smallpox epidemic that had reached the palace of Saint Germain. Since Louis XIV liked to hunt, he often found his way back here to the chateau anyway, accompanied by his brother and his mother, Anne of Austria. Louis XVI was born in Versailles, just like his grandfather, and he became king before he was 20 years old. He's the one who married Mary Antoinette of Austria in 1770. But unlike his grandfather, Louis XVI spent most of his time in Versailles, and here he embarked on several projects for the interior while devoting himself in his private chambers to studying various sciences that he had particularly liked. He was very fond of his wife and and in 1774, he offered her the Petit Trianon built by Louis XV from Madame Pompadour. Boy, we all stick together, don't we? And first lived in by Madame de Berry. So Marie Antoinette made that house her private domain. Louis XVI was a shy but studious king, and he was interested in international politics and played an important role in the War of American Independence. Benjamin Franklin, acting on behalf of a newly independent United States, negotiated a treaty with Louis XVI here, which led to America getting critical support from the French during that revolution. Far from being pillaged by the rampant mob, as might be imagined, the Palace of Versailles came through the period of the French Revolution relatively unscathed, even though some would not have minded seeing the key symbol of the monarchical system uh, laid to waste, but the inhabitants not so much, uh, off with their heads. The court left Versailles in 1789 back to Paris and it would never return. Well aware of the palace's image, even Napoleon chose not to settle here, but opted instead for Trinon, which was where Mary Antoinette lived, which was way more modest. Following the death of Louis XIV in 1715, the court abandoned Versailles and transplanted itself briefly back to Paris. Versailles entered a long period of neglect, and the palace was merely a source of curiosity, and the Tsar Peter the Great visited it twice. In 1722, the young Louis XV returned to Versailles. His first concern was to complete the work of his great-grandfather, but he wanted to set a more intimate and private spaces uh, to perfect his knowledge. He was actually a timid guy, and he didn't feel comfortable in these grand, huge chambers that his ancestors had built. So he built smaller chambers. 
No lingering in the bedchambers. The king demanded that he have an audience. There had to be nobles and other government employees watch him wake up and get dressed and eat. And considering his bathing habits, since Louis XIV was terrified of bathing, he only took three baths in his life, and he lived to be 72, I wonder if they had to draw straws to be there. Notice how worn the marble steps are. The palace contained about 350 living units. And just as a side note, there were no inside bathrooms. People used to urinate and let's say relieve their bowels inside, sometimes right on the steps that we so gladly walk on. This is the Hall of Mirrors, and these mirrors were stolen from Venice. Construction began in 1678. There are 357 mirrors in the hall, which at the time was the most expensive items to buy. Venice had a monopoly on making mirrors, but France hired Venetians to come and make them. But the secret was so guarded that the punishment for revealing the secret of how they made these mirrors was death. 20,000 candles were used for special occasions, so it became a corridor of light. The principal feature of this hall is the 17 mirror-clad arches that reflect the 17 arcaded windows that overlook the gardens. The palace is so large and a design oversight meant that all the dinners were cold because by the time the servants got from the kitchen to the dining areas, everything had cooled off. Eventually, Louis XV had a private kitchen built in his private apartments. You don't have to worry about that because you can't eat in there anyway and they do have places and restaurants for you to go. The palace is just chock full of paintings and sculptures, just ornately designed rooms. You can understand why the people got a little aggravated. Pope Pius VII visited in 1805, but it wasn't until the ascension to the throne of Louis Philippe as King of the French in 1830 that Versailles was actually brought back to life. Like members of his family, the Orleans, the new sovereign was keenly interested in history, and he decided in 1833 to create a museum dedicated to all the glories of France. The monarch fought to reforge a bond among the French people, from the legitimist monarchists to the revolutionaries, from the supporters of Napoleon's to the liberals. He wanted everybody to be French again. And in 1837, he opened a museum to celebrate the glorious events in the history of France from the Middle Ages to the start of the monarchy. A lot of these paintings are in the Hall of the Battles. The beginning of the 20th century was marked by the First World War, and Versailles also suffered uh, during this conflict, which forced the palace to close and its works to be protected. But like Paris, Versailles was not invaded, and so pretty much life just continued, uh, even though at a slower rhythm. The museum collections actually grew and visitors arrived, though fewer than before. The palace spent the years mobilizing support for the national effort and assisting the wounded and the families of soldiers as much as possible. It was also chosen as a signing place for the peace treaty of 1919, but there's more on that in the video about the outside area of Versailles. There was a period that the palace suffered a lack of maintenance for several years uh, due to just a crippling shortage of money for renovations. And so it began to show its age. Salvation came from uh, the United States in the person of the billionaire John D. Rockefeller, who made two enormous donations to the palace for its restorations. He was recalling the involvement of France in the American War for Independence, so he thought he'd do a little payback. These gates are not the original. During the French Revolution, the new government ordered that the gates that were covered with gold be dismantled. But in 2008, the gate was recreated and covered with 100,000 gold leaves. Eventually, it got too busy here for the king, so he had an entire complex built outside in the back area. There's more on that on the video about the outside of Versailles. As we were getting ready to leave, a major rainstorm started and we got a little wet, but it was still worth the trip. I wonder what he would think about commoners sitting on his statue. 